Sandbar, dude, big sandbar. sandbar. You notice how it's kind of brownish? A lot of people think that's iron. It's not iron. It's uh, tannin. And tannin comes from all the dead leaves on the forest floor and pine needles and, and bark and stuff. And the, the tannin. Yeah. And the, the rain leaches through the, the soil, the duff, with all the pine needles and everything, the leaves. And the tannin ends up in the water and turns the water kind of a brown color. It's basically the same thing as soaking a tea bag. You know, I mean, black tea is a lot of tannin. Except this is a lot more dilute than a, than a cup of tea. Uh, mm -hmm. Tannin's the stuff they use for tan leather. It changes the proteins. Um, an interesting aside about tannin, so if you drink a lot of, people who drink a lot of black tea tend to be not overweight. And the reason for that is that tannin binds to protein in your intestines, and so you don't end up not absorbing it very well. So you don't gain weight. So it's a kind of a weight control thing, drinking tea. Uh -huh. In nature, the reason the, the trees and the other plants put tannin into their leaves and then drop it, you know, the reason for that is it's a defense against insects. Because when insects eat leaves with tannin, it does the same thing. It binds with protein and they starve to death. Yeah. Whether it's deer or insects. So deer will tend to avoid plants with a lot of tannin too because of the same thing. You know, they, they don't want to lose weight. You know, that's not an issue for them. They want to gain weight. Um, it's on bedrock, right? So when it rains, where's the water going? It goes right into the streams. It can't soak in because there's bedrock right underneath it. So we saw the same thing at Pipestone Creek. For those of you who were there, you know, there's flash flooding happens. So wherever there's bedrock close to the surface, flash flooding is always a hazard. Um, back in time to the end of the last ice age, you see that light colored boulder over on the other side? Yeah. How did that get there? Well, that's what they call a glacial erratic. It's a, a glacial erratic is a huge boulder that's out of place that was carried down by the ice sheets from farther north. Uh, that's a type of rock called a gneiss. And the, you can tell a gneiss by the, it's a nice rock <laughs> because of the white and black bands. Gneisses are made inside huge mountains. So it's the most metamorphic rock. It's the rock that's been changed the most. So pretty much any kind of rock, if you squeeze it and heat it enough, it'll turn into a gneiss. The reason it has the dark and light bands is that the, the minerals will separate, by the heat and pressure, will actually separate out the minerals and they'll flow around each other. And the, uh, the dark bands are the higher density minerals and the light bands are the lower density minerals just from that heat and pressure. So it just tremendous forces inside of mountains. So, so we know wherever that came from, there used to be mountains. It could have come from the Pinocchio Range, which was right around here, but more, more than likely, since, yeah, since farther north is just the rift, more than likely it came from Canada, from mountains that used to be up there, and was brought down. And then when the glacier melted, and the glacier was thousands of feet high, when the glacier melted, it, it just dropped the rock right here in place. On top of the bedrock, which you can see is completely different rock. So all of the bedrock that we see over here, this is all lava. And, so, and uh, it's a type of lava called uh, basalt, which is uh, the same kind of lava you would have in Hawaii, which is oceanic lava. So how, how did dark, dense oceanic lava end up in the middle of North America? Typically it's, you know, in Hawaii you know, the edges of a continent, you know, where the oceanic plates are. Well, uh, about a billion years ago, a rift started right in the center of North America, the, the mid-continental rift, from heat rising from deep underground. And it, the, the heat came up and it stretched the crust apart, and the crust started to sag, and then faults developed along the edges as it broke, and this lava welled up in eruptions you know, sometimes every hundred years or so. It's, it's not so much as volcanoes, but it's huge lava flows that covered the countryside. So that's the origin of Lake Superior, as there's a, there's a rift a fault on the north side, south side, and other ones, you know, and that's where the lava welled up and, and made, made just poured thousands and thousands of feet of lava out on top of the older rock. So the Pin old Pinocchio Mountains are somewhere underneath all this lava 
you know. But it actually stretched across too, so the Pinocchio Mountains got, you know, stretched apart like that. And so mm -hmm. in the middle of Lake Superior, you won't find any other crust but, but, this, but this lava. Um, we'll see, this will change dramatically on the other side of the falls. We'll take a look at it over there. There won't be any lava there. All the outcropping is all, west all of lava? This, all of this is basaltic lava. That boulder obviously isn't. See how red it is? That's, that's yeah. another glacial erratic. But everything else is, is lava. Glacial erratic. The sand is just eroded glacial debris and other rock from upstream. Yeah. The sand, sand is a... Uh, if you ever take a microscope and look at sand, it's beautiful stuff. It's, it's like, like uh, all the gravel you see in the river except in miniature. It's really beautiful yes. under, under dissecting scope. And most of the sand is light colored, and that's quartz. And why, why is sand mostly quartz? Because quartz is at the hardest mineral that we have here. You know, we don't, don't have very many diamonds, so quartz is the next best thing. So the other the other minerals get pulverized into, into clay and silt and that, but the sand the sand is the quartz grains that are very, very resistant. And they're beautiful. I mean, under a microscope, you'll see the, the clear quartz and the milky quartz and the citrine and all those different colors. Whenever you go by the shore, you see the big gold, the rocks, and you get smaller ones, then you get smaller ones, then you get sand. They're all the same thing. They're just different sizes, right? Yeah, exactly. They're all yeah. The, yeah, so the sand will mimic whatever the gravel yeah. is Yeah, in the, in the types. Although there's more quartz in the sand. Because it's the bottom of Lake Superior, is there sand on top of the stuff? At the bottom of Lake Superior? No, the bottom... In, deeper parts, not near shore, but the deeper parts are all red clay. It's like, it's like chocolate pudding. I mean, we dredged it, came up with a dredge from the bottom of Lake Superior, and it's it's like, I don't know, even goopier than chocolate milk. It's like, I mean, than chocolate pudding. It's like a cross between chocolate pudding and chocolate milk. It's this reddish, milky, or chocolate milky looking stuff. And there's a, there's these little shrimp, these uh, these scuds that live in it. They're, they're the same color, they're pink, and live in there. It's, and there's clinkers from the old steamships from the coal burning. There's all kinds of stuff in there, but it's really goopy. Everybody thinks the bottom of Lake Superior is all cool, it's like it's all sandy and rocky, and most places no, it's just clay. So why does it have red clay in there? So how far out? Because it settled out from the water during the yeah. end of the ice age. How far out would that goopy part start? I'm not sure. Okay. Where the water isn't moving, where we really don't have the current, the current flow. Kind of yeah. yeah. So, so Frank asked, well, where did all the clay come from? The clay is clay is just pulverized rock. So this, this basalt here, you know, if it gets pulverized, it'll turn into clay. There's no quartz in it for sand. So this turns into clay. So the glaciers ground up the bedrock as they went across it into rock flour, and that became the, the red clay uh, in Lake Superior. And Lake Superior at the end of the Ice Age, remember I talked about the Gruel River and how that was the, the outlet for Lake Superior because there was an ice dam over at Sault Ste. Marie. Um, so, so the lake level was about I think it's 500 feet higher at least than it is today. And so wherever you see red clay, like Ashland, the Bad River, you know, Red Cliff, all the all the places around Lake Superior, where you wherever you see all this red clay, that was lake bottom. That was underwater a few thousand years ago. So the lake was a lot higher than it than it is now back then. And it drained didn't drain out east, it drained right through the Brule and into the St. Croix. So that's the story there. How, how are witches bring the cause? What are they causing? This, this one, this one is called. This is token cause it on black spruce. The ones on balsam are caused by a fungus, and that will die. It's not genetically changed. It's just a so what exactly is it? Is it just just a branch? Like, so the growth hormones are causing like a cancer? Is it kind of like a cancer? The fungus is kind of like a cancer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's causing a disease. It's called a witch hazel. Huh? Witch? Which is room. Which is room. Which is room. Which is room. So Which this is one you can't propagate from cuttings. So even if you could root it, it would revert back. But once it goes away from fungus. <laughs> it's a wild rose, but we don't know which one. Poison ivy. Poison ivy. Yeah, poison ivy. Poison ivy. We hate you. Yeah. I am really scared of either a vetch yeah. or a wild pea or something. Large outcropping and rock. What, what do we see down here? Oh, a little pool. There's all these really little vignette places here. Hmm. Look at the polypody fern there, that's nice. Oh, the polypody, yeah. Down there, polypody. And that's got some uh, that's, that's flood damage caused by debris in the water. Different rows, a lot of rows. 
this I one fungus eating uh, another see. fungus. It's a fungus among us. Yeah. I think this is a <laughs> This is a russula. Some kind of russula. Oh, it's been eating. Thimbleberry. I would eat that one. Where? With a thimbleberry. This is a berry. This is a red one. Well, that's the fruit. Who hasn't tried thimbleberry? Thimbleberry fruit. Yeah, Valerian. Valerian. I, I can get my hand out of there and it won't be mm. so bad. Valerian, there's the leaf. You know what it looks like. <clears throat> This is a typical. This is a stop where all the geology classes come take a look here. No, the garnets are little red. Oh gosh, the light's terrible. These little things. These are all garnets. But if we, if the sun would be out, you could see them sparkle. Okay. They're just little ruby red garnets, all scattered through the rock. Um, here, here you can see a little bit of the red right here, and these here, this row right here. Oh yeah. So they're not gem quality. What kind of pine is that? That's, that's a white spruce. It's like a There's a fault that runs right through here. And if you look on the waterfall side, it's all the uh, asphalt. If you look behind us, it's all sandstone, which is the, uh, carried in by rivers into the rip much later. All of this is sandstone. Thousands and thousands of feet of sandstone. So what happened here? Well. A couple of things. So the first thing I mentioned is the rift happened and the crust sunk down, pieces of the crust went down, lava, lava came up and made all this lava, right? About 10,000 feet in places, so it was like a mountain range of lava, of lava flows. Uh, if that would have continued, like is happening in East Africa today, uh, with the uh, rift valley, great rift valley in Africa, uh, there, a new continent would have formed. So North America would have split in half. And so Duluth and Hayward would be like uh, New York City and uh, Paris, you know, on opposite sides of an ocean. So why didn't it continue? Well, what happened was a con continent slammed into North America in the east. They call it the Grenville continent. And it smashed into eastern North America. Everything from Ohio east is part of that Grenville continent. Slammed the rift shut. And where the, where the faults had dropped the crust down because of stretching, the pieces dropped down to make Lake Superior, it compressed it and parts of those blocks popped up. And this is where this popped up from that continent heating. And this whole chunk of lava went way up into the air. I got thousands and thousands of feet into the air from placement. So this lava happened first. The sandstone behind us was what filled in on top of the lava. So thousands of feet of lava, thousands of feet of sand, which had flowed into, into the rip from the rivers. But so when this happened though, the lava popped up and over the sandstone. Notice the, the lava here is higher than the sandstone. This is the older rock. Normally older rock shouldn't be above younger rock, but it got, this wedge of crust got pushed up from the compression, from that collision of continents. And so that's why these waterfalls are all along this fault line. The fault, this is one of the very few places in our region where you can see the exposed fault. It's right here. This here is the fault. Yeah. You see, it's, it's busted up rock. You know, a fault isn't just a flat surface like a sheet of paper. If you got two pieces of crust grinding against each other, so it's pulverized in there. It's pulverized rock inside of a fault. So this is all here. This is all fault material. This is all the rock pulverized by the two, two crustal chunks grinding against each other. 
so back when the rift was going on, the fault went down. Because the crook was getting stretched, the fault went this way, down this way. But then when the continent slammed it together, it went the other way, like this. And the lava went up and over the sandstone. So, that, so this is all the basalt lava, the older rock. And then underneath the faults is all the sandstone. So the older rock went up and over the younger rock. Look on the other side. You can see it pretty dramatically there. Where the, where the lava is on the left there, the the right the down here. All the sandstone. What's really neat about the sandstone, which was all the sand carried into the, the Lake Superior Basin, into the rift from the rivers around it, uh, you know, 800 million years ago or so, is that it, it tells a weather record. So you'll see there's, there's real narrow layers of sandstone and wider layers. The rain event. So we get a lot of sand, right? It was a big rain. And when you get thin layers, it was a you know, smaller rain that carried less sand. So, so it's like tree rings. So you have a weather record from about 800 million years ago. At Pipestone Falls, you had a weather record from 1.7 billion years ago. So, but the same kind of same idea, you know, you can see how much rainfall happened, you know, because of the amount of sediment that was deposited each time. Does it smell well, it says, like root beer if you pick a leaf? <laughs> 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 roots, you know, the roots, no, the roots, roots right? Yeah. White lettuce. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's White lettuce. Black spruce, can you help me tell? The branches curve upwards like that. And they'll shorten your upper. Black spruce, okay. What's the other one? That's the white spruce. You see the difference? The needles are longer. White spruce. White spruce here, and then black spruce over there. That's kind of funny. There's some real close here if you want to take a closer look. And it isn't, and look at the rim on it. What is, what is it called? Felt lichen. Felt lichen. It's a common name. Felt lichen. It's a felt lichen? Felt lichen. Felt lichen. Felt lichen. Oh, look at it. This is the only place you've found it? I'll make some room for guys to come down and take a look. And she's got me a couple of cuttings. I have them going at home. Yeah. We keep them. Oh, this is a little mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Balsam fir. Cross. Wait. White spruce, White spruce. Yeah, prickly needles all around the twig. The needles are triangular instead of flat. Jeez, I just love the patterns it makes on the ground. Twin flower. Oh, twin flower. Yeah. It'll stand over rocks. Yeah, it'll leap over things. Yeah. Yeah. Twin flower. Those beautiful flowers, they're over the old end. Two little, two little tubular bells opposite each other. What are they? Twin, twin flower. This is twin flowers? Linnea borealis. Um, yeah. Linnea Linnea. Sand Man in America, right? Sand bar. Sandbar, the biggest inland sandbar. Biggest inland sandbar.
or ship or a boat. We're on the lighthouse point. Okay. Anorthosites. Anorthosites. And it's a it's an oceanic magma, a mafic magma, but it, it's unusual that, in that it's light colored. So the Apollo astronauts before they went to the moon, they studied this here because this makes up the lunar highlands. Oh, they, the they light came here to study it. They came here to study it. Yeah. Like orange, I guess. Yeah, orange lichen. What is this orange lichen? The orange is a, 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 a sunscreen pigment, you know, for the intense UV out here in the water and the sky. But uh, this particular lichen is a nitrophile. It likes high levels of nitrogen. Was originally magma, and you yeah. can see the crystals. Yeah. So, this, so this was deeper stuff. This was deeper, and then there was erosion going on, came closer to the surface, and then and then lava intruded. Oh, uh, it made these dikes or sills into it. Well, it could have been deeper too, because because uh, because you get basalt inside of other rock because the surrounding rock absorbs the heat, so it cools fast. So the crystals are really tiny and microscopic. Yeah. So this was a later on there was a crack, and the lava forced its way through. So this is younger lava. This is older. This is this is younger. This is older. Uh, look, look at how the crystals are going in one direction for the most part. Yes. That's the direction of flow in the magma chamber. So it's like a pot of soup yeah, boiling. Slow the, the, the direction, right? So they're pointing. The, so the crystals well, in the magma chamber, the crystals will follow the flow oh, of sure. the lava. Or the magma, excuse me, the magma in the chamber. So a geologist could tell you which direct. So they'll know the direction was either that way or that way of the flow inside the magma. Yeah, chunk of lava, of basalt, tipped on its side, and you can see the cross-section here of the lava flows. Oh, yeah, right here, right here. Yeah, it's unfortunately getting covered by lichens. The seagulls over there and some cormorants. Yeah. I've seen cormorants inland, too. Mm -hmm. We're often in our lakes. It's just one It's the side of the road. Lighthouse at Wisconsin Point. Mike Haim and Jim and Chris are around here somewhere. Some sort of airplane up there, Jim. Hey, Chris. Say hello. Hey. hey. Either an Air Force or a guard station there. Or air station isn't there. Somewhere out here, yeah. I think there is. Hey, Jim. You're yes. not Rice Lake anymore. What? <laughs> 25. Well, it's clear there. Really dark over here. Dune grass. Dune grass. That's the genus that that the uh, sagebrush is in. It's, uh, beach sage. Yeah, some kind of beach sage. I don't know which one. It is. 